the book. Uh, but I read the first book and loved it in a heartbeat. Uh, and you just, just read the next two books in like five minutes. I think I loved them so much. I had never before connected with a female literary character in a way that I did with the lead character of that series. Um, so before I think the movies were officially announced, and definitely before they came out, we started work on a three-year audio drama project. We adapted the book as safely as possible into one-hour episodes. Uh, we did all three books. It uh, amassed probably over 70 episodes. Uh, and it was very much like the old, you know, 30s and 40s radio shows, The Flash, something like that, where it would be a full four, full sound effects. We had a full cast of characters, over 100 people, I think, that participated from all over the country. Uh, we had actors in New York, and uh, that was the benefit of having uh, gone to a liberal arts acting school, is we had a big pool of, of talent to, to call from. Um, but yes, we released it uh, like all free on iTunes, but we were released an episode a week. We did it for three years. And you secured the rights to? We did uh, not. So we did not charge for it. Was it was a guerrilla project. It was a guerrilla fan project. Uh -huh. um, the creators, we found out, were aware of it uh, yeah. and uh, totally fine with it. That's we're great. Very happy with it. Um, but it, it kind of laid the groundwork. It was sort of a test pilot. You know, we didn't really know what we were doing. We were fans. You know, we had an idea of what we could do creatively in our own house uh, with some of the skills we had. but. But it laid the groundwork for us to go like, all right, well, we've done this now. We've we've uh, figured out how to do it. What to what we what you know bumps in the road to look for. Um, so we're in the process right now of, of adapting uh, a, an original novel that we we do have the rights to. Um, and uh, the creator, you know, we're very happy to work with. He actually was uh, one of the actors uh, in the Katniss Chronicles, and. Um, I, I would say, I don't know if you feel this way, but I do think that audio dramas um, are something that a lot of people don't think about that are, are very easy to um, sort of put together these days. I mean, the, uh, the younger audiences out there, and, and uh, you know, a lot of older <coughs> audiences as well, are getting used to the idea of like, you know, I listen to podcasts here, or I put something on audio, whether it's on my phone or my computer or whatever. And uh, it's, it's not a very big jump to go from a podcast to an audio drama. And uh, it engages people, I think, in a way that they don't realize. We've noticed it's really big outside the United States. Mm -hmm. Really big. Um, in the UK, Singapore, Philippines, Africa, and New Zealand, yeah. New Zealand, we've listened all over the world, and they're, they're hungry for it. They love it. Not so much in the US, uh, but it's growing. Uh, and I noticed that there are a lot of audible original audio dramas that are popping up right now in the US. It's interesting. In the, in the UK, it seems like uh, audio theater never died on no, the radio no, 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 the way it did in America in the late 50s. Yeah. Late yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to make a comeback, but definitely if it's something that you are able to adapt, if you are creators of novels or just, you know, mm -hmm. any type of work, it's definitely a medium that if you have the capability, which is, again, it's, it's doable on a shoestring budget. Um, but uh, if you're capable of adapting your work, we highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. And we can definitely answer any questions if, you know, if anyone has any specific questions on adapting yeah. things for audio drama. We're happy to discuss that. But I, we, I think the way that we're approaching it really is, uh, again, this, this next project is sort of going to be our, our first foray into uh, doing it professionally as opposed to a fan project. But uh, looking down the road, I think we see a place where this would be an easy step between getting your, your comic or your book or your, your uh, uh, comic series, whatever, uh, into other hands and basically giving people an idea of like, oh, it, it could be adapted into another medium. Here's one, you know, I'm sure you guys all encounter people that uh, sometimes lack the imagination to, to see something from a, a static image into like what could it be as a TV series or uh, a cartoon series or something like that. And this seems to be uh, sort of in between that might be more affordable or accessible to, to creators like us. And the project that we're adapting is called The Odd by Robert G. Pearson, uh, who's a fan and a friend of many people in the audience. Um, but uh, it's a uh, post-apocalyptic action comedy, very much in the vein of Firefly, Star Wars, Mad Max. Uh, Mad Max. Uh, but if you can imagine a world where chess has become a live action battle to the death. So all of the, the different people on the chessboard are actually people and they're battling <coughs> for, for uh, possession of the square uh, that we cause with an amazing crew and cast of characters with it. So we're currently finishing all of the scripts. There will be 12 in total, so 12 one-hour episodes and uh, 
will be available hopefully later this year, if not early 2019. Mm -hmm. But as Brian said, if you have questions about um, the production and adaptation of works into audio drama or just the equipment to use um, that you can get inexpensively, please let us know what happens to answer those questions. So what about your podcast? Uh, we have four podcasts on our network currently. Um, the first and our flagship podcast is called The Fan Base Weekly, and it's very much a roundtable type discussion. We have a we have four hosts, and the only bring on one is not two guests from the industry. It can be many different facets of the industry: film, TV, comics, animation, video games, everything. What was the time? Sorry, what was the time again? Sure, The Fan Base Weekly, and we have some postcards up here that have uh, all of the information on there. Um, but ultimately, we choose four of the top three headlines from the week, and it's not just comics from movies, it's science and uh, space exploration and everything. It's politics. politics. <laughs> Absolutely everything. And for about an hour, we discuss those topics. And really, the reason that we love the discussion is it's not just another DC podcast where we're talking about DC things, but we're bringing on these amazing creators. And not only do you hear them, of course, promoting their projects because we want to give them a platform to do so, but you're also hearing the personal side of them, hearing their thoughts on things, their reactions to things. You don't often hear when someone is making the rounds to promote like, a new project. So that's a really fun one. It's been going on since we started in 2010. I think at this point, we, when we rebranded, we started over with podcast episode one, but I think we're somewhere over 300 episodes yeah. at this point. Yeah. So it's been going strong for, ten, for eight years. Um, another one is the Arkham Sessions podcast, and we have Dr. Andrea Letamendi, who is a clinical psychologist, and uh, with her co-host, they analyze every single episode of Batman the Animated Series, and she does so mm -hmm. actually from a, like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she does so from a clinical lens and examines, of course, Batman and then all of the, the people in the rogues gallery, and so they work with patients. It's fascinating. It is uh, a deep dive into the character. Yeah, fun. yeah. So it's it's really amazing. Uh, what else do we have? Quality we have time. quality time with family time. If you guys really like the 80s sitcom Family Time, starring Michael J. Fox, uh, we like the art session. You guys go through every episode of Family Time and analyze it not only from a writing perspective but also the historical and political context of the time and what was going on and why it's significant to the Last but not least, we have Tread Perilously. Uh, sure. Tread Perilously is uh, is hosted by by two uh, hilarious guys who basically look at the worst of the best TV out there. They find a series that is known to be uh, fantastic, and they go, "Well, what's the worst episode? Let's watch it. Let's uh, break it down, make fun of it a little bit, and then talk about whether if this was the first episode that we had caught." Would we have continued on after watching this episode? So they they touch on a little bit of everything, um, and then even sometimes you know dive at, you know sort of outside uh, the norm. They did try to uh, safely at one point for a month where they doing the opposite and looking at the best of TV. They dived into a few uh, a few films, so uh, a lot of good stuff with that one as well. They're all available for free on iTunes as well as our website, we listen to Google Play, so you can find them everywhere on your podcasting device. Um, well, I don't know. The only thing I would add about that is that I, I, and Barbara does the same thing, but I'm always looking at uh, each one of these things, uh, both from a perspective of entertainment and also like how does it benefit us as creators. And one thing I would say with podcasts is there are a lot of people out there running podcasts. You can, they're always looking for guests. You know, so it's a great way to promote your work and get to know other people or network without even uh, really knowing you are doing it. And uh, if you feel like you, ha you know, we've heard that there's some people that are already running their own podcasts, but if you feel like that's something that you'd be interested in doing, again, even more so than the audio drama, I would say it's a very uh, low budget way to to sort of uh, create content and uh, build an audience and a following that might be willing to look at other creative avenues that you are uh, involved in. And there are some really easy ways to make that happen, not only with equipment on a real budget, but also just if you have follow a few simple tenets of like uh, having consistency. If you want to build your audience, making sure that they know how often you do your podcast. Is it every week? Is it every month? Is it on the same day of the week? 
how long is it? You know, you want to have a two-hour episode and then a 15-minute episode. So as long as you're building in those, those uh, bits of consistency, your audience is going to stay with you as well. Mm -hmm.